and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes Yeah, that's the introduction done now, let me think. So I'd like to say thank you to Molly, who left a, or wrote a testimonial on my website. And just thank you, it was a really nice thing to wake up to today. And if you would like to also leave a testimonial, just go to my website and there's a a page with you know the menu write a testimonial you click on that and you can tell me what you think and also there's quite a few testimonials on there already that you can read now so let's think what I'm going to do today I didn't make one of these yesterday and something I, I made I made two recordings yesterday evening because now we're early hours of the morning yesterday evening after about 10 o'clock I made a deep sleep whisper hypnosis recording and a deep sleep what was it called I don't know relaxation hypnosis for stress anxiety and panic attacks that one lasted about 50 minutes and the other one was about 22 minutes long after I recorded those I felt uplifted my mood raised after making those recordings And I don't know why I sound surprised when I say this, but making these recordings clearly are good for me. So hey, I shall continue then. Not for that reason, but that's... A little added bonus. So yeah, I was kind of not surprised, but interested in why. And I think maybe see my my podcasts are all very different, actually, in a sense of the the ones I do regularly. Uh, this one so there's a let me pull you to sleep where I just ramble on for an hour there's the deep sleep whisper hypnosis where I whisper and it lasts about 20 minutes and it's very focused yeah quite focused there's the sleep hypnosis weekly which is a longer but not a whisper one. It's a longer uh, sleep hypnosis session. And then I've got the the fourth one, which I do regularly, and I've started to do that more often, is the uh, relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety, panic attacks. That one... What I say seems to flow out of me. And I am... I would say I'm kind of surprised sometimes at how... Well, how it flows naturally and easily and 
I suppose I'm kind of almost confident, I suppose not almost, I guess I am confident when I make those recordings. Because with the sleep sessions that I make, I don't really have any issues with sleeping myself. I have in the past, and that was generally due to stress. Um, God, I had one job in a pub when I was 18. That's a, at a few a bar uh, serving alcohol and stuff. And I have to be careful how I describe this because I'm trying not to put myself down. Because all, most of my life I've always said, oh, I'm, I'm rubbish at maths and I'm crap at maths. And I don't want to say that stuff about myself anymore, you know? Well, it sounds like I'm going to cry, doesn't it? I don't want to say that stuff. That was more like Lolan Hardy, that was. <laughs> so I don't want to put myself down and I'd like you to join me in that as well. Um... Not putting me down, but to not put yourself down. And not, you know, maybe when you're about to say something that perhaps you said to yourself lots of times, uh, I'm no good at this, I can't do this, I'm rubbish at that, that, that kind of stuff that I would guess that we all say at some time about something. Um, and some, you know, quite often it would be out loud to another person. The amount of times I've told people, oh, I haven't got an artistic bone in my body. And regardless of my, and I will say my lack of artistic talent when it comes to uh, painting and drawing and stuff like that it's definitely not going to get any better if I keep telling myself that I'm rubbish at it at the same time I'm doing zero to help it get better because I don't draw anything or paint anything or attempt it So it's kind of instead of saying, oh, I'm, I'm rubbish at that. Maybe, you know, well, I haven't learnt to do it. I've not discovered my inner talent. I've not discovered yet my inner painter. Anyway, I kind of class what I do as an art. Artistic kind of this it's kind of artistic it's creative and it's yeah, I think of it as an artistic thing kind of painting with words kind of but at the same time I know I'm, I'm no linguist because I don't use lots I, I'm quite a plain speaker I speak with plain language um, I could use words that aren't used very often in conversations um, but I almost feel like I was showing off if I'd have to learn the words first <laughs> but um, I do want to get a thesaurus and start playing around with some of those words in this podcast because it'd be interesting because so I like to learn new things but I like to have fun learning new things see I could talk to you making this recording and I could talk about the history of Neolithic men is that a, a real thing or I could talk about the Bronze Age, or I could, you know, which doesn't interest me. Like, generally, I'm not that 
bothered about it. You know, I'm not. It's not something. You know, it's it's not a hobby. It's not something that I have passion for, and brilliant to those that do because those that do are the ones that have paved the way to find out our history which makes sense and kind of explains our present I guess but if I was to read a book about I don't know the history of toilets lavatories if I was if I was going to do that which I, if you've got a book like that please send it to me and I will read bits out of it or if you find one on Amazon or something just go to my website and there's a post address on there honestly I will if you put your name on there as well in the book and I will mention your name every time so that you're connected to toilets <laughs> but I will you know I'm, I'm up for that you know the history of worms different kinds of worms and but I get to learn new things that I didn't necessarily need to know but I don't necessarily not need to know or you know it's not it's not necessarily useless information compared to the sort of stuff that I might pick up from watching the news or political programs Because, you know, sometimes I can watch a political program or an interview with a politician and 15 minutes afterwards think, I don't actually know what they said. It was just a bunch of words that sounded important and sounded like they were, you know, with every answer, it's like, well, that's a great question. Uh, let me answer that question that you just given me. I really think it's a brilliant question. You're a great interviewer. Yeah, someone else answered me a very similar question recently, and um, I answered them as well. And but I don't want to give the exactly the same answer here in case other people might have seen that interview before. And we don't want repetition like that. But one of my colleagues once said to me, "If you do get asked a question, then do." A utmost to avoid answering that particular question but add filler add filler you know like a package that you're sending in amazon you know it might be a tiny little thing object but it's full of polystyrene and um plastic and you know cardboard so it fills it up so it looks like a big box but actually it's not a big item it's just in a big box so it looks impressive and then you end up filling the 15 minutes up with nothing Na, 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 na. Merry Christmas. I did actually have that. I had, uh, I can't remember what it was, but uh, honestly, I ordered two items from Amazon. One was a, one was a small item, physically small item. One was a large item and I mean Amazon well I've always found Amazon to be really really good for delivery they deliver you know unless the products come in from another country so it's not always so quick so if the products come in from America I've waited sometimes you know couple of weeks to get the product but if Amazon are delivering it themselves usually it's delivered from the UK and it comes really quick and I'm not saying that to promote Amazon but let's give credit you know it's they are when it comes to customer service they seem to really be good at what they're doing and uh, also I'd like uh, the owner of Amazon to give me a couple of billion uh, dollars just as I've promoted him because you know a few thousand people are going to hear this eventually at some point 
over time. So that that's going to increase his uh, share sharehold and his stock share surely. <laughs> anyway, I've got this package. Knock at the door. Bang, bang, bang. And uh, well, it didn't. It wasn't bang, bang, bang. If it was knock, but I don't have a door in front of me to knock on. I don't carry a door around. Oh, wait a minute, I might have one in my pocket. So, I go to the door. I'm expecting a delivery, but I thought, you know, there'd be two packages, but there was just one. And he said, oh, it's just one package. I said, isn't, where, where's the other one? And he said, just give me a break, mate, will you? I'm not interested in talking. Dad, oh, what, what, just leave me alone. Just sign for this, can you please? I said, what do you mean just sign for it? I'm asking you, where's the other package? And he said, there is no other package. He said, you're really winding me up now. I said, I only asked you once. He said, no, you've asked me twice now. Now, if I were you, I'd go inside and close the door. And I thought, his, his voice is getting deeper. And... Uh, what I said to him, what I did is, I said, wait a minute, look at this. And I pulled my trousers up and I showed him my socks. And I took one of the socks off and put it on my hand, right? I made like a little glove puppet and I said, sorry. And he started laughing. So we had a little cuddle and then he went. So I got the, I put my sock back on obviously because it was cold. And this package, big old package, brought it in, dragged it in. Andre loves boxes. Loves, loves boxes. I mean, I'm improper, loves them. It's the smell, it, because cardboard, if you've ever worked in a factory, which I have, I worked in a few different places, factories that had boxes, which, um, and there's a smell to the boxes. I'm not quite sure how to explain it, but, um, so I've had jobs where we used to get pallets of boxes that were all flat, flat packed, and you'd make, you'd, you know, you'd make them into boxes. Uh, kind of like an industrial scale origami. And it was, there's that smell, the smell of fresh cardboard. It's quite nice. I still quite like it. I'm not, I'm not saying that I spend hours sniffing cardboard. It's not, it's not a thing, you know. It's not a thing. I don't have an issue with it. I don't need therapy. Not for that anyway. And... Andre loves the box. And what I normally do is I put the box in the hallway and I let Andre climb all over it and like sniff and thinking, what's in it, what's in it? Daddy, Daddy, you going to open it yet? You going to open it yet? And I think, nah, I'm not going to open it yet. Nah. And I'll sit and I'll just sit there watching telly and he'll be... Daddy, please, please, can we open the box? I need to see what's inside. I said, no. Nah. And I think so, no, no. He said, Daddy, please. So eventually I'll give in and I bring the box into... Sometimes, okay, sometimes I open it in the living room. Sometimes I open it in the bedroom. There have been occasions, not that often, that I've opened it in the hallway. There have even been occasions, very, very rarely, and a long, long time ago, that I opened the box outside the front door. 
which is what I had to do with this big black squeaky chair because it was too big to fit the box through the front door so I had to the, the chair was in two pieces so I had to take the, well I just basically had to take each piece and bring it through to the living room or the lounge or the breakfast room it's kind of everything really I do wonder what would it be like if I lived with somebody here you know with a, a nice lady who you know just like had it was in a relationship in love and all that stuff all that Ugh, she's a girl I'm not kissing you it's a girl I'm not like that anymore but I was when I was seven and I don't know what what it would be like whether I could handle being around somebody all the time I don't know because I like farting and I know that that's not necessarily a reason not to have a relationship and to it's not a reason it's not it's not a reason to it's not something that should get away in the way of your happiness so I guess that's what I'm trying to say if I met someone and would, would you like to go out I really like you and I said no thanks because I like to fart at inappropriate moments whenever I feel like it and I won't hide my farts like I'm ashamed <laughs> like I'm ashamed of them and it, it does I mean I don't know that seems like a really petty reason not to have a relationship especially if I meet someone that likes me because that hasn't happened for quite a while I thought it happened recently but uh, I don't I was. I thought I was gonna. I kind of thought I might have met someone that likes me, but it didn't quite work out. It hasn't so. But we'll see. You never know. I mean. But I just wonder because technically this flat is big enough for two people. I've got a double bed. This uh, living room, bedroom. So there's two two rooms kitchen, bathroom, hallway, storage room. So it's big enough for two people, technically. But then two people are living here, because Andre's living here with me. So, and that's one of the things, because I've got paper, I've got newspaper on the floor for him to go to the toilet on. And unfortunately, he's untrainable. He was, he's untra I did everything I could to try and get him to go in one particular place, and he won't, won't do it. So I have to kind of cover all scenarios, and even then, I don't always manage to get, you know, get the right place. And the reason for that is because he doesn't spend all his time in a cage. and that's on me really because I've got a cage for him but he doesn't live like a ferret he doesn't live like a ferret in the wild obviously because he's not in the wild but he doesn't live like a, a ferret who lives in a house either it, like that is living with someone because he, he can do whatever he wants whenever he wants He's got the whole flat. He can go in all the rooms apart from the storage room. He's got access to all the rooms. And when I go to bed, and I don't want him disturbing me, I close the living room door and leave him in here. So he's got this whole room, all his toys, multiple places to sleep, go 
to the toilet, he's got food, water, everything he needs, and a big room. In fact, you could probably fit one, two, three, four, probably fit probably 40 of his cages in this room, just stacked them on top of each other. Two, three, four. Yeah, probably about, yeah, probably about 30 or 40 cages. So that gives you the kind of space. I realize, you know, I do have gravity in this room, so he doesn't, he doesn't have a little plane that he can fly around. But if he did, he could. You know, so technically you could say, well, he hasn't really got that much space because it's just the floor. Yeah, I suppose he does climb up on the chair. If he can get to the table, he'll climb up onto the table and get onto the laptop. He loves the laptop. Um, but still, there's still, you know, he's got he's got a bath little bathtub full of dirt as well as some of his toys are in there and he's got two other he's got a big box a lego box which is this big plastic cardboard plasticky box which is for storage and he's full of his, his toys and cuddly things and he's got another thing uh, which has got lots of balls in it and uh plastic bags and toys and stuff in there he's got his um, big tunnel that he climbs through the big plastic tunnel that he goes in he's also got his girlfriend over there which is my very old slipper so I make sure that his girlfriend is in this room when I go to bed so that he can you know he can be romantic not that he needs me to be out of the room when he does it, because he's he's got no shame, really no shame at all. I mean, he's he's actually done it when I've been on making a recording, and it's really weird because when he does it, he stares at me. It's it's you know, he literally just stares at me. It's uh, I think he's trying to put me off. I think that's what it is. He's actually in bed now because I, when I made those recordings a few hours ago, I closed this door in here because I'm in the, in the living room now. I closed that door and I went into the bedroom and I closed that door and I made those two recordings. So when I came in here, I didn't see him, but he must have just ran straight into the bedroom and got in the bed. Didn't even know he was in there. And he loves that bed. I don't know who loves it more, me or him. It's a real kind of... I love my bed, I always have, even... Even the most rubbishy beds that I've lived and slept in over the years, always loved the bed, you know, even if it's uncomfortable, I just, I get accustomed to it. But now I've got a nice bed that I suppose technically I'll need to change in a few years. Because is it every seven years we're supposed to change a bed? I've had mine for four years now. That's an expensive uh, thing to change though. I think the bed cost me £350. So those are the big items that are kind of, the only three, probably the three biggest purchases, three of the biggest purchases that I've made in my life have been in this flat. There's the bed, which is about 350, I think. There is the washing machine, which is about 350. 
and then there was the carpet, which was, it was on special offer, so it was about 600, which would cost me probably about a thousand pound to replace it now. Which it does need replacing, but uh, don't quite have a thousand. So I'd like to get a new carpet. If for no other reason just to see Andre's face, because he would go out of his mind. Because imagine the smell of a new carpet. He wouldn't know what to do. He wouldn't know where to poo. He really wouldn't. It's like, oh, because oh, oh, there'd be none of his smell would be on it. And I do have a, a carpet cleaner, like a proper um, carpet cleaner that I can use to clean my. Well, clean the carpet but especially for those parts that the paper goes on so I try and sort of keep the place clean and that but the thing is if someone comes in here that's some because I'm used to seeing it I'm used to him doing a poo in the corner and that's what I'm used to and he, he does it on the paper and I'm you know it doesn't phase me at all. And even clean up him, you know, cleaning him up after, if if he has an accident or whatever, I have to clean up the carpet. It doesn't bother me. It's annoying, but it doesn't really bother me. But someone else might not like it. They might think, ugh. And... I'll be honest with you, if someone came round here and went, ugh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know, I don't think I'd really enjoy hearing that. Because even though, you know, regardless of what it does, I connect it to him and the love I have for him. So it doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. It can be annoying at times doesn't bother me bother me you know but then the other day I looked after my friend's dog and Andre loves him and he loves Andre but Andre tries to bully him and he keeps biting his feet and this dog is a big, big, one of the strongest dogs I've ever met. You know, and I used to have, when I was a kid, we had a St. Bernard, St. Bernard, St. Bernard, you know, and they're huge and strong. This dog, maybe not quite on that level of strength, but still really strong. But back then I wasn't as strong as I am now. So I was a teenager like 14 or whatever so I'm a heck of a lot bigger and heavier and stronger now than I was then so I'm thinking that the dog now this dog is on par with that St Bernard with strength not with size or heaviness but just with pure strength and it's embarrassing because Sometimes I'll, I'll walk him. If I'm with my friend, I'll like carry. I'll take the lead a little bit, and it's fine until the dog decides to walk in a different direction, and I end up being dragged along. I'm on the floor crying, and that's embarrassing. It let, honestly, it nearly pulled my arm out of the socket. My face. All you could see was just like running around, and my hand attached. My arm dragging along, it was just so strong. So I looked after him last week for one day, and I always promised myself <laughs> I promised myself that I would never pick up dog poo ever. It's just one of those things that I've never really aspired to do. It's 
I don't know, it's kind of... What other things would I not I kind of link to that? Standing on a plane wing as it was flying. That's something that I've never really aspired to do. Bungee jumping? No. Mm-hmm. No. No. Or, you know, jumping out of a plane? No. No. Picking up dog poo? No. No. No, 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 no. I mean, I suppose at least if you jump out of a plane, when you land, you're not thinking about, I've got to wash my hands, I've got to wash my hands, I've got to wash my hands. You know? And this dog produces the biggest turds on the planet. Honestly, the poo is actually bigger than him. Unbelievable. You see it from space, guaranteed. So I've got these bags. So nowadays, <laughs> and I'm, I should probably be careful what I say here, but you can't just leave it because it's you know it's the law. You, in where I am, you have to pick up the poo. Not everybody does, but. Um, I think the rule of thumb is if there's no one around then just you know leave it if no one's watching I f- maybe, maybe I'm wrong but I figure that's the rule of thumb for most dog walkers if there's no one look around if there's no one there just kind of walk on but it's quite a busy park and so I took him out. The first thing he does is he... I think... I picked his poo up once before. But this time he did three. In two walks. One in twice in one walk. And I, it was... So big. And so warm so I I mean I picked it up with a bag made sure that you know my hands were clean and you know I don't want to go into details but uh, I'm not an expert at it but I kind of I can be quite careful when I need to be so I picked it up and couldn't believe how warm it was I mean there used to be a thing that you could buy for people that go fishing or mountaineering and there'd be these little cases almost like little glasses spectacle cases and but they were t- little and inside you'd have this uh, charcoal that you would light and it would burn but then you put put it into the case and it would warm up and then you put it into a little holder or something and you put it in your pocket and it keep you keep you nice and warm like you know you could hold on to it keep your hands warm and you know well I was thinking you could use that with the dog that dog poo in the winter would really it would thaw your hands out but of course that's probably it's possibly a bit gross I I don't know I suppose I never really can judge these things (laughs) but I didn't like and the smell oh the smell just followed. It's almost just. It almost seemed like his bum was just airing itself out. 
like it just stayed open just to get some air in or something it's like oh the whole park people the other side of the park were fainting Whew. so I got rid of it not not the dog got rid of the the poo bag and then he does another one it's like really I mean come on so yeah it was I just oh, nah I can't do that I can't I can't allow that <laughs> it just and I even thought about getting a dog before I got Andre I was thinking about getting a dog uh, just a little one to keep me company you know someone to love really I guess but I got that of Andre but he's a lot different to a dog there's not one part of him that wants to please me you know like a dog wants to please you wants to you know you're the dog's life and the dog wants you to attention and wants all that stuff Andre doesn't really need any of that stuff occasionally he'll jump on me and he wants a cuddle and um, and he doesn't really show that he needs me that often apart from when like earlier I went and saw a neighbour and Andre just lay there in my arms and just like clung to me so he does that and I notice it I don't I don't like let him know that I've noticed but he literally just he doesn't move he just stays there in my arms when normally he'd be wiggling around and you know perhaps biting my hands and jump climbing over me and trying to get off so I, I think there is a little bit of a he's a bit of a baby still like towards me I think I'm still because I had babied him a lot but I wanted to I wanted to I wanted him to just to I suppose he is my baby you know and I don't need him to learn anything I don't need him to learn social skills uh, for when he goes out to work you know that that kind of stuff's not relevant I wish that he'd behave himself a little bit better sometimes because when he wants something that's all that matters so when he wants to play he'll make every single noise scratch the carpet everything until I get out of bed or until he gets my attention and I know he's doing it because well, I've just watched him and I see what he does but other times I'll actually watch him and he thinks I'm in the bathroom because the bathroom door's pulled up and normally I leave the bathroom door open unless I'm in there or sometimes even when I'm in there and there's no one else in the flat so he thought I was in there because a lot of the time I do close it if I'm in the bath or something or I want a bit of peace and I see him and I watch him I'll be in the bedroom and I see him just lie down in front of the bathroom door waiting for me and he's completely clueless that I'm sitting in the bedroom on the on the bed he's waiting for me to come out of the bathroom it's kind of funny to watch you see his kind of his little nose trying to get underneath the door that's why I used to love about kittens is I used to live in a house that had kittens like cats and that and I'd be sitting on the toilet and this is a little paw go underneath the door trying to get to me that's funny they're so cheeky little kittens are 
but he's not really like a cat either. You know, he hasn't got that. He won't just come and sit on my lap for hours like a cat does. He's, I suppose he might do when he gets older, but at the moment he just, he doesn't need to because he's got all this space. He has a bed to himself. You know, he doesn't need to sit on my lap because he can go and sit, he can go to sleep in the bed. He's got a double bed to sleep in. Why would he want to squeeze onto a, a chair with me? I kind of wish he did a bit though, because I'd quite like that. Not squeeze on a chair, but you know, just lay down and have a cuddle. But he goes through periods, sometimes I'll be watching telly or sitting down and he'll jump up and jump on and off of me, you know, 20 times in a matter of a few hours. Just keep jumping up and cuddling and then jumping off again and depends on, I guess it depends on his mood, what he wants to do, how he's feeling. So I've got this box. Let's have a little drink. I've got this box from Amazon and I open it up and there's another box inside it which is half the size of the box and the rest of the box is just full of plastic and like blown up inflated plastic and I open that box up and inside there with more cardboard putting it together is the actual item which is half the size of that box so what so why did they send it in such a big box now that's a big, that was a big box. You could fit a lot in there. I mean, it wasn't even, it wouldn't even be a squeeze to get into the box. It was so big. Plus all the room once she was in there. And I think Andre quite liked getting into my box. So always trying to get into my box. Like, in the end, I think I put some, I put some toys and stuff in there. And I think I sealed, because it was, well, my box wasn't leaking, but it was, it was falling apart a bit. So I, I sealed the front and the back so that he could just go in the front. Or what I might have done actually is I sealed the whole thing and made a hole in the side so he could get into my box through the, the side hole. So I made like a special hole for him. And he liked my hole. He liked it. He used to nibble on it. He used to nibble around the hole, like around the the rim of the hole. As if, almost as if he was trying to make it bigger when it was big enough already. The hole, my hole was, he could easily get into the hole without it being, him nibbling the rim and trying to get it to I don't know what he was, I suppose it's just the nature comes in, doesn't it? With being a little ferret, he kind of, he wants to make it his own. wants to, I don't know, but he just wanted to, I suppose, experiment with the hole and put things in there and sort of see what, what fun he could have with the hole, I don't know. But he... It was amazing the amount of stuff that he put in there. There was food. He was hiding all kinds of stuff. Seriously, he was st storing stuff in there. Uh, bits of food. Um, oh, this one one day. This is this is quite a while ago. I had 
someone was up here, a friend was up here, and I had a, what was it? It was a crunchy bar. So I had a crunchy bar, and I think they were like party sized crunchy bars, so they were small. So I gave him one, my friend, and I had one for myself, and he just put it on the side of the chair. Within two seconds, Andre ran up his leg, grabbed the crunchy bar, and was gone. And I was searching everywhere for it. Well, not everywhere, I mean, I didn't travel to France, but I was searching all around the flat, could not find the crunchy bar anywhere. And you know, even though it was gone, not even part of my brain thought, oh, perhaps I should give my friend my crunchy bar, or at least let him have some of it. No, I ate it all in front of him. But I just couldn't find the crunchy bar anywhere. And then about six months later, I found it in his hole. He hid the crunchy bar in his hole in that box and because I couldn't really get inside it I'm not going to get my hand up there and it was kind of like it's almost trying to f like feel my way in the dark so in the end I had to open the whole box up and I couldn't believe what I found so many bits of pizza there was all kinds of stuff you know, just like, seriously, Andre. I think it was a pen. Or an old typewriter. It was like, where did you get this stuff from? A satellite dish. I just... It was the first edition from one of the Monkeys' first songs. I was just like, where did you get this from? Why isn't it signed? Yeah, so it's, I got rid of that box because it was a bit too big. But he loved going in there. Const he liked to climb on the top as well because he could use it as a ladder to then get onto the table or to get onto the bookcase. And then he can get on a bookcase and push everything off. Everything. Every single book. So if I allowed him to get onto any of the bookshelves of my bookcase, he wouldn't stop till every book was pushed onto the floor. Can't help himself. Has to do it. It's almost inbuilt in him to do that. And I don't know why. I don't know what I'd, why. Why Why does he do it? I don't know. It seems a very strange thing to do. It's almost like uh, it's, it's obligated to trash things. It just seems a bit rude to me. Maybe. But yeah, I, I don't know what I was talking about. A box. The, the Amazon... Andre, there was a reason for that, I can't remember what. So now while I'm here and in the attic, there's birds, I've got a nest of birds up there. I hear them like moving around and tweeting and talk, tweeting. <laughs> yeah, they're on Twitter, sending messages to each other. And... All I can hear is or whatever Twitter makes what sound it makes. If I can hear them. And the other day I took Andre out early in the morning. I say early, it was probably about half seven. And I don't know why. I think I'd put the rubbish in out the 
outside for the rubbish people and I say rubbish I'm not being insulting they collect the rubbish they're, they're really good at what they do they're really good rubbish people and as I was in the garden with Andre I was at the side of the house side of the flats and just the guttering just where my flat is I saw all these birds fly out one by one that are living in the loft or the loft space I was like wow I've basically got lodgers that aren't paying but what I don't understand is why I thought they'd be asleep at this time of night unless they're just up there thinking I wish it'd shut up. Why is he making so much noise? We're trying to sleep. I hope that I'm fairly quiet, to be fair. All things considered, I'm not exactly shouting, am I? I'm not shouting. I'm talking rather quiet. Lee, I do believe. So I've got a couple of new podcasts. You know me, I can't stop making podcasts. Uh, but these are just podcasts of all of my stuff. So, um, one's on SoundCloud and the other one is Podcast Co podcast.co something like that and one of them allows me to transcribe my podcast for free it costs me £15 a month to be on their host as a podcast but to be able to use their transcription service is really groovy just means it's going to take it's yeah it's going to take a a nice while to build something you know to actually go through the process of not just transcribing them automatically but going through them and editing them and trying to make sense of them with the hope of putting the transcription some of them onto the actual podcasts so that should be useful for those that are maybe hard of hearing or just enjoy reading stuff as well as listening or instead of as well as possibly increasing the Google search so it might raise the podcast episode a bit higher on the Google search because it's easier to index because of the transcription and the text and also I'd like I want to write some books and I've got so many audios that I think that I could with the right editing and maybe with someone to help me I could write some books that people might like or 
hopefully will like or find useful. And there's a lot of books in me. I'd like to kind of do a book to go along with future new podcasts and new courses and stuff that I do. So, you know, I'm going to, but not just ebooks, I'd like to do the ebooks, but also have it available to purchase as an actual physical book as well. Because that is super groovy. So I'm going to ask for help for this. I'm going to put the feelers out to see if there's anyone that can help me to put this together. Because I think it would be amazing. Imagine, I don't know, just amazing to have a book, to have one book, but to have lots would be cool. You know, just the amount of audio, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours of me talking means that there's there's a lot of books there, possibly. There's at least one anyway, but there's more than one, I'd say. So I'd be interested to see how it's going to go. But, you know, it's going to take quite a bit of work on my part to do what's necessary to get it you know as far as the editing as far as the transcribing goes that's the the biggest part of it because once the transcription's done then I'll have everything there in black and white and I can say well that's a good bit that's a good bit cut and paste, cut and paste and just organise everything into categories of what I've talked about and maybe then say well I've talked a lot about the internal dialogue and self talk there's enough there for a book and any book I do won't, it's not going to be an expert book not going to be coming from an expert perspective just just some ideas just my ideas and hopefully they're useful and that's it the only thing I can really talk about as an expert is me and my life and how I feel so with the some of the podcasts I can talk about my experiences but I can never be an expert on another person we can only be experts on ourselves so anything that I do write in a book and as well as when I make podcasts it's just ideas I'm just making suggestions of ideas and It's, it's options, it's there. Like a buffet. You just test a few bits and if you like it, yee. Anyway, I'm going to go because I've used my hour up. I wish you well. I will be back again very, very soon. Please remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Bye.